Good morning, everybody. We welcome those of you here in church and those of you joining us from home to St. Norbert Parish and to our celebration for the 22nd Sunday in Ordinary Time. Please stand as we begin our liturgy. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Is God's grace enough for us? Does God's grace allow us to walk into the crosses of our lives? Does God's grace bring us to this altar today so that we might acknowledge our need for God's mercy and God's forgiveness. Ron, Ron, here, Ron. Lord Jesus, you welcome the poor, the lame, blind, and the weak. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you lift us from our sins and give us new life. Christ have, mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you show us the way to our heavenly inheritance. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. 
Let us pray. God of might, giver of every good gift, put into our hearts the love of your name so that by deepening our sense of reverence, you may nurture in us what is good and by your watchful care, keep safe what you have nurtured through our Lord Jesus Christ, your son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. You duped me, O Lord, and I let myself be duped. You were too strong for me, and you triumphed. All the day I am an object of laughter. Everyone mocks me. Whenever I speak, I must cry out. Violence and outrage is my message. The word of the Lord has brought me derision and reproach all the day. I say to myself, I will not mention him. I will speak in his name no more. But then it becomes like the fire burning in my heart, imprisoned in my bones. I grow weary holding it in, and I cannot endure it. The word of the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. I urge you, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God, your spiritual worship. Do not conform yourselves to this age, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and pleasing 
and perfect. The word of the Lord. be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer greatly from the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed, and on the third day be raised. Then Peter took Jesus aside and began to rebuke him. God forbid, Lord, no such thing shall ever happen to you. He turned and said to Peter, get behind me, Satan. You are an obstacle to me. You are thinking not as God does, but as human beings do. Then Jesus said to his disciples, whoever wishes to come after me, must deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. Whoever wishes to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. What profit would there be for one to gain the whole world and forfeit his life? Or what can one give in exchange for his life? For the Son of Man will come with his angels in his Father's glory, and then he will repay all according to his conduct. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. How did he know? Today's gospel begins with Jesus knowing the time was right. Now was the time to go to Jerusalem. But how did he know? Was it because Jesus was super smart, like a chess master who can look at the board and read four moves ahead? Was it just gut instinct, like an athlete with a natural sense of timing? How did he know now was the time? I have no doubt that Jesus was smart, or that he had good instincts. But I don't think he relied on his intelligence or his intuition. Jesus relied primarily on prayer. The fact is, Jesus is constantly praying. He prayed publicly. He prayed privately. He prayed before he healed people and then afterward. He prayed before meals. He prayed before important decisions. There are about 35 explicit references in the gospel to Jesus praying. He was constantly praying. That's how he discerned his Father's will. And that's how he knew it was time to go to Jerusalem. 
Whoever wishes to come after me must follow me, Jesus says. And that means following him in prayer. The P in steps stands for practice. And prayer is the primary way that we practice our faith. But prayer is hard. It's really hard. Anyone who takes prayer seriously knows that. There are many different kinds of prayer. There's what we're doing right now, the Mass. There's the Liturgy of the Hours, the Rosary, the Divine Mercy Chaplet, all wonderful ways to pray. But I want to talk about a more personal kind of prayer. When we pray in our own words, when we sit alone with God and pray straight from the heart, this can be the most fruitful kind of prayer and the most necessary and the most difficult. Why is that? Why is this kind of prayer so difficult? Well, lots of reasons. Probably the most obvious is that we're so darn busy all the time. From morning to night, most of our lives are jam-packed with activity. So who has time to pray? Who has the energy? Who can calm down enough to enter into the silent presence of God. So we put it off. We say, we'll get to it later. But for so many of us, later never comes. Friends, there's only one way around this. We've got to take the time to pray. We've got to commit to it. Every spiritual master in our tradition says the same thing, from St. Anthony of the desert to Thomas Merton. They all say there's only one absolute rule of prayer, and that's that we have to show up. We have to show up. Nothing can happen if we don't show up. But if we do, day after day, something most definitely will happen. We will come to know that God shows up too. Deacon John is fond of making this promise. Praying for 20 minutes a day will change your life. He even guarantees it. Here's another obstacle to prayer, unrealistic expectations. We tend to think that prayer is supposed to be inspiring and transformative, and it is, but only over time. The truth is, prayer is very often dry and boring and distracted. So be realistic. If you feel like you're wasting your time in prayer, don't give up. It's naive to expect a mountaintop experience each time. That's precisely why we need a prayer routine. Seek routine in prayer, not stimulation. Prayer is relational, and like any relationship, it deepens and matures only with time. Here's another suggestion. When you pray, be honest with God. I think we tend to fear God. 
So we don't want God to see the whole truth about ourselves. We tend to present a nice gussied up facade in prayer. We say what we think God wants to hear, but we're only kidding ourselves when we do that. Unless we're honest with ourselves and honest with God, prayer will remain superficial and nothing much will come of it. But look at today's first reading. It's a prayer. Jeremiah is speaking directly to God. And he's speaking with brutal honesty. He's saying all the wrong things. He's saying, you duped me, Lord, and I allowed myself to be duped. Jeremiah tells God he wants to quit. He wants to stop being a prophet. But then he finds he can't. He can't stop speaking of God. The feeling is too strong. Their relationship is too intense. God's will is too fundamental to his being. That's what happens when we're honest in prayer. That's the kind of intimacy that eventually develops. So there you have it. Three practical suggestions for prayer. Show up, be realistic, and be honest. One final thought. Prayer is a dialogue. It's a partnership. We're not in it alone. God is our partner. God is eager to meet us in prayer. A journalist once asked John Paul II, how does the Pope pray? He said, as the Holy Spirit permits. In other words, God helps us to pray. We have only to ask. I'm good friends with Deacon Bill, and I get lots of emails from him. And each email, he ends the same way, and I find it very consoling. He says this, pray, God is listening for your voice. With one voice, let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, all things visible and invisible. I believe in Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the Holy Spirit, was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. Rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church I confess one baptism, forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead 
and the life for the world to come. Let us join together now to bring our prayers before our God in heaven. For the church, may the grace and mercy of the Holy Spirit strengthen us in faith and draw us closer to becoming one in Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. For our nation's leaders, that the Holy Spirit will inspire them to pursue justice, peace, and reconciliation. Let us pray to the Lord. For those living in poverty, that God may provide for their needs and restore access to stable jobs. Let us pray to the Lord. For our children receiving their first communion, that God's grace will draw them into, an imperso- into a personal encounter with Jesus Christ and empower them to grow as fervent disciples. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For all the sick of our parish, among them Corrine Kerrigan, Betty Ziegler, Kevin Horan, Dorothy Wilson, Robert Gerhardt, Nina Gallagher, and Jennifer Mahler, and all who have COVID-19, that God may bring them healing, comfort, and peace. Let us pray to the Lord. For all those who have died, among them Edward Armbruster, that they will enjoy eternal happiness in heaven. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, For Felice Di Francesco, whom we remember in a special way at this liturgy, and Robert Uzo, for whom this Mass is being offered. Let us pray to the Lord. Loving God, you raise up the lowly and welcome the poor. Graciously listen to these, our prayers for them and all the world, and grant them according to your will, through Christ our Lord. Pray, friends, that your sacrifice and mine might be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May this sacred offering, O Lord, confer on us always the blessing of salvation, that what it celebrates in mystery it may accomplish in power through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and eternal God through Christ the Lord. For out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. 
by the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death. And by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O oh Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with this Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, 
with Augustine and Norbert and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Nelson, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. So our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, lead us not into temptation, Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy 
that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Renewed by this bread from the heavenly table, we beseech you, Lord, that being the food of charity, it may confirm our hearts and stir us to serve you in our neighbor. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Just want to thank you for all you've been doing to help keep us safe and by following all the guidelines that the CDC and the Archdiocese and we here at St. Norbert's are, are trying to do. And just to remind you of two things, that if you do in fact come down with COVID-19, that you, you let us know so that we can follow the, the right procedures here. And the second thing is just take your time in leaving the church, follow the, the guidance of the, uh, the ministers in, in having you leave the church and, and keep distance. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God.
Okay, great. I need to, I just need to review this real quick. I never play this. Is there an intro, Laura? Um, two, measures. two measures. Oh. <laughs> 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 go with our love, go with our prayer. Take the word of the Lord. I mean, like, it was, uh, why, uh, like, what I'm thinking of is doing it live, right in front of, like, holding, you know, I think it might be better. Yeah, mine is, like, disappeared. Okay, so her phone might be better. Okay. Are you using video or using just audio? I was going to say, I'm not sure. I'm doing video. Well, I have a video. I have a video. You have an audio. You have an audio. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, I can send out the link. Yeah, yeah, we'll send it out. We'll send the link out. Um, so like today I'm going to be next week. Next week? Okay. Oh, that's right. Next week. This is my birthday. That's also really nice. Um, yeah, yeah, whenever you're. Was it included in there? Yeah. I, 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 I,
<laughs> completely have to go back. <laughs> okay.